You know them, you love them. Ocelots are absolutely adorable. But what if I told you these cats aren't just exclusive to the jungles of South and Central America, but could actually also be found in the United States? Believe it or not, these cute nocturnal cats are actually 100% native to the US. But tragically, they are at risk of extinction in the northernmost part of their range. So why is that the case, and how could we protect these adorable critters? Well, let's cue the intro and figure it out. And now they only occur in the southernmost tip of Texas, and that's the only place in the whole United States that they occur. Bruh. And in the last 50 years, there have been only three confirmed sightings in Arizona. It is on the edge of extinction in Texas. Recent estimations revealed that fewer than 100 of these creatures remain in their natural habitat. So yes, Minecraft lied to you. These cats are not just exclusive to the jungles of South America, but instead, these cats will survive pretty much anywhere where the temperature is adequate and the vegetation cover is enough to keep themselves concealed. To the surprise of many, this actually does include the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. Even though most of this habitat primarily consists of desert, these cats don't exactly live in the sorts of deserts you might expect. Rather than living in the scrubs and lowlands of the Sonoran Desert, these ocelots live high up in the sky islands and mountainous regions of the Sonoran Desert and its surrounding areas. They live in these remote habitats specifically so they can have a cooler climate and also because the cooler, more humid climate found at these higher elevations allows for more plant cover, which these ocelots prefer. These ocelots, along with a lot of North America's other wild cats, prefer these habitats so they could ambush their prey more efficiently. Unlike some larger feline species that live in the area, ocelots tend to have much smaller home ranges on average, so they usually spend more time up in the sky islands, but that doesn't mean they won't leave them on the occasion. While they might have small ranges as far as felines go, their home ranges could still be up to 30 square kilometers and will often include multiple different sky islands or mountains, and in some cases river valleys, which also contain lots of vegetation. While they might be rarely seen in the daytime, at at night, they will often travel between these different habitats in the search for food and sometimes mates. But tragically, on the search for these things, these cats are left vulnerable to all sorts of different predators and, more importantly, humans. Part of the reason why ocelots are way rarer in the United States now than they were in the past is because of the fur trade, primarily in the mid-1900s where they were nearly hunted to extinction in the US, all for their coats. Having once existed all the way from Arizona to Oklahoma and even some parts of Louisiana, these cats are now pretty much exclusive to the southern quarter of Texas, with sparse sightings still occurring in Arizona. While estimates do vary, it is currently believed that only about 100 ocelots still exist in Texas, with only as few as possibly one individual still existing as a permanent resident for more than a few miles away from the border in Arizona. Interesting fact, this one individual's name is Little Jefe, which is meant to contrast with one of Arizona's only jaguars, El Jefe. Yes, similar to the ocelots, Arizona also has jaguars, with these jaguars also using the Sky Islands as their habitat. One of the reasons why it's believed that there's so few ocelots left in Arizona is actually in part due to these jaguars, as the additional predator left their population more vulnerable to depletion by humans. Still, it's not impossible for their population to potentially rebound in the future. While rare, sightings of other ocelots crossing between the Mexican and Arizona border have been reported, and it is more than possible that they could potentially repopulate in the future given that there's no fully developed border wall between the two nations. At least, not a fully enclosed one. Man, I'm gonna have a lot of political comments now, damn it. As stated before, these guys are native, not illegal cat aliens. Now getting back on track, thankfully these small cats also have a much more stable population in Texas. Sadly, a more stable population doesn't really mean that much when they are still constantly at risk of habitat loss. Having existed throughout southern Texas all the way until the 1990s, in modern day the vast majority of ocelots are primarily restricted to Texas's Rio Grande River Valley. Thankfully this area has very few roads and lots of vegetation, which is perfect for these ocelots, but in turn they still do face many threats existing in this river valley. The main one being ranchers, which tend to fragmentate the ocelot's habitat, on top of also removing trees and other forms of vegetation which these ocelots rely on in order 
prey to hunt and to not be hunted by other predators. Thankfully, unlike the jaguars of Arizona, most of these ranchers are much more willing to lend a helping hand in order to protect these ocelots, as they don't pose a serious threat to the cattle in which they are trying to raise. But still, these ocelots will occasionally raid chicken coops, and unfortunately, they are sometimes killed for this activity. Also, just like lynxes and bobcats, a lot of people assume all wild cats are dangerous, which really isn't the case, especially with an animal like this which doesn't even get over 30 pounds. Really, in general, ocelots are very shy creatures, and even in the few cases where they can become used to people, they are still normally incredibly cryptic during the daytime. After all, part of the reason why these cats spend so much of their time up in the trees is so they could avoid predators like people. Along the Texas, and even more so the Arizona border, ocelots are still targeted by drug cartels for their pelts, which could be sold illegally on the Mexican black market for a lot of money. This along with the presence of additional predators as mentioned before is another reason why ocelots are much rarer in Arizona compared to Texas. But there is a crucial saving grace. Unlike Texas, Arizona's ocelots could still travel travel freely between Arizona and Mexico without the presence of a barrier. So juvenile cubs could still establish new territories in Arizona despite having grown up in Mexico. This is why despite ocelot sightings being incredibly rare in Arizona, new younger individuals besides Little Jefe are occasionally sighted just north of the Arizona-Mexico border. On the other hand, despite Texas having more ocelots than Arizona, Texas's population is completely separated by Mexico's population, by not just the Rio Grande River, but also by over 50 miles of desert. This fact comes with its own set of benefits and its own set of problems. On one hand, the ocelots in Texas are much more vulnerable to inbreeding, due to the lack of new genes entering into their population. But in turn, these ocelots are also much better protected from the poachers coming in from Mexico. Still, both populations of ocelots face many of the same threats, including, but not limited to, lead poisoning, pesticide poisoning, and most importantly road collisions, which kill many wild cats each and every year in both Texas and Arizona. With so few ocelots being known to exist in the United States, a lot of people end up being very shocked once they learn just how important these creatures are to both Arizona and Texas's desert ecosystems. Alongside owls, because of their highly fast metabolism, ocelots are one of the best creatures around for pest control, as they could eat tons of rodents each and every night, and they they will also occasionally scavenge on dead animals, which helps to clean up the ecosystem as a whole. Ocelots also make a large part of both Texas and Arizona's top predators' diets. The American alligator, jaguar, and even to a lesser degree both the Mexican wolf and coyote are all known to prey on ocelots. And just like ocelots, these animals also deserve our protection. Luckily, with multiple organizations working together in order to rebound both of the ocelots' populations in the United States, these cats still do have a chance of rebounding in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that other blah blah blah, and hopefully I'll not just see you, but maybe even some wild American ocelots in the near future. Goodbye.